Hello, Bronwyn Lund here from Bronholm Tours. This is part two uh, of um, a walking tour of Fremantle Town. Um, I'm just uh, going to uh, walk up the street of my old university and then around to the roundhouse, which was actually a holding bay, a holding bay prison uh, for people who are going to be transported out to the island of Rottnest, which was a prison island back in the day. And then um, up along the... Um, up along the uh, shore uh, of the uh, of the Indian Ocean. Um, so uh, I really hope you enjoy the tour. Part one of this tour starts up at the Town Hall Square and uh, goes around um, to the uh, football oval and uh, past the markets and down the main street of. Uh, of Fremantle Town. Now Fremantle was established in the early 1800s as a British colony and um, it uh, struggled a bit for a few years um, and then um, they finally capitulated and brought in convict labour. They didn't want convict labour in the beginning. Um, this is the hall of Notre Dame University, or Notre Dame, as it's called in American. And um, that's actually where I graduated with my, my master's degree many moons ago. So I spent a lot of time on this street, walking up and down from the library to the lecture theatres. And I think what the um, university has done, so this is the library and a rather nice courtyard and there's lecture theatres and study rooms off the courtyard uh, where I spent a lot of time and um, the university has done a really fantastic job of, um, of renovating the buildings. Just noticing the high security on that <laughs> camper van. So that's the University of Notre Dame, Australia. I did actually do some of my master's studies um, in the US at uh, Notre Dame in uh, Indiana. And that was, that was a really cool experience. So this was another entrance over here that I used going into the lecture theatres. And up here on the right is another example of the beautiful cast iron lattice work that uh, was fashionable on the colonial buildings um, in the mid 1800s, 1850 onwards, when you know trade actually began began to be a thing in Fremantle, and the money really started flowing in so and all of these buildings are merchant buildings trade buildings banks that was a bank there on the right hand side but that's now been taken over by the university so the whole area is the university they picked the buildings up for a song when um, there was a recession in the uh, in the 80s and just uh, beautifully renovated the buildings and, and basically brought a lot of life back into this end of the town because it was pretty dead during the recession. And um, now there's quite a lively student life and cafes and so it's really brought a, yeah, a university a university town feeling to, um, to Fremantle, which is just what it needed. I need some coffee to focus. <laughs> I like that.
Right, so they've actually opened up the tunnel that's underneath the roundhouse. That hasn't been opened up before. Interesting. So we're now entering the Bathers Beach precinct, getting closer to the beach. And uh, this is uh, the roundhouse. And it says, this tunnel was excavated by the Fremantle Whaling Company in 1837 to facilitate the transport of whale oil and merchandise between Bathers Bay and the town of Fremantle. Well, there you go. Several major Aboriginal pathways met in Fremantle. It was an attractive campsite and trading place because of good supplies of fresh water and food. The traditional name for the area has been reported as Manjeree, which derives from the Noongar Manja, indicating a place where goods were traded. Bathers Bay was known as a whale trap before European settlement because whales, mimang in the Aboriginal, would frequently get beached here. According to traditional stories, Aboriginal people would come to feast on them. Aboriginal prisoners were held here between 1839 and 1903 before being transported to Rotnest, which is the island off the coast here, to serve sentences. So the picture there is how it looked um, in 1863. Captain Stirling, named Arthur Head, in 1829 after Lieutenant Governor George Arthur of Van Diemen's Land, which is now Tasmania. The photograph shows 19th century buildings on Jail Hill. From the left is the first courthouse, the roundhouse, a flagstaff, the first lighthouse and the second courthouse. On the lower level and either side of the roundhouse steps is the former police station complex. So it was quite the uh, prison complex for yeah keeping Aboriginal prisoners for whatever trumped up crimes they were thought to have committed poor people so we just pop up the stairs here it's quite a good view actually out across the ocean I'm just debating with myself. I think it's worth actually walking down here because these were the warden's cottages where the prison, the people who managed the prison lived. And even though it's got a rather dreadful history, they are really quite lovely little buildings. I think it's worth taking a little detour can also see over to the right the port and the river, the Swan River that feeds into the Indian Ocean. So it's just a little detour of the warden's cottages. I think next time I come back, I might um, come back when the roundhouse is open and just do a roundhouse tour because it is actually quite interesting to go inside and, and see. Let's see what it says here. So the jail was commissioned by Governor Stirling and completed in January 1831 at a cost of, of 1603 pounds to a design by the Swan River Colony civil engineer Henry Revelry. No, Henry Revelry, sorry. 
The plan was loosely based upon Jeremy Bentham's panopticon principle so that all parts of the prison could be observed from a central post. Jewell used a similar plan for the quad on Rottnest Island in 1864. With 12 16 feet long walks of white limestone capstone, the building appears round from a distance. Inside there were eight cells, two privies, which is a toilet, and um, a two-storey section comprising an entrance and jailer's quarters around a central exercise yard. In the yard, a well was dug to a depth of 40 feet. The flagstones in the entrance were quarried in Yorkshire and brought out as ballast in ships. Wow. Under the front steps is the bakehouse and laundry. The bakery can be seen at the northern end of the stairs. So that, this would have been the bakery here. Hmm. Interesting. You are standing at the northern side of the roundhouse stairs at the entrance to the bakehouse. When the roundhouse was built in uh, 1831, a bakehouse was built beneath the landing to the stairs. Looking into the bakery, the location of the now collapsed brick kiln and fireboxes is shown on the glass panes in front of the brickwork. The flue system for the three fireboxes returns to a point below the southern pediment of the entrance facade of the roundhouse. Hmm. There you go. Would have been hot working in there, I reckon, especially on a summer's day. The roundhouse was the first permanent public building of the colony and served as the first prison until its replacement in this capacity by Fremantle Prison in 1858, which we actually walked past in part one of this walking tour. The building served as accommodation and storage until the building was opened to the public in 1982 as a monument. The Roundhouse is the oldest extant public works in Western Australia. And that's the colonial eye that um, had that drawing from 1851 and actually there's quite a great view back down towards the town hall where we started the uh, where we started part one of this walking tour <coughs> so that's a bit about the roundhouse i just want to go up here and uh, enjoy the view out over the ocean and then we're just going to finish this part of the tour along the uh, quay. that grey building is the Maritime Museum and I haven't actually been there but I've heard very good things about it so I must get there one of these days and here we are looking out over the coast over the Indian Ocean and that's Bayview Beach down to our left there we're just going to walk along there in a minute and uh, out to the right right out to sea over to the left, the very, very large island you can see there is Garden Island. That's a defence uh, base now, a military base. Uh, and then straight ahead I thought was Seal Island, which I've called it on some of my other walks. But apparently it's not. It's an island that no one goes to <coughs> excuse me, because it's full of snakes. So Rodnest Island, right over there to the right, right out on the horizon, that's where the prisoners who stayed in this roundhouse were transported to and there was a prison, an island prison out there. So it was pretty, pretty nasty times for, um, for the Aboriginals of this country at that time. So now we're just going to uh, walk down along the shore and then uh, next time I'm in Australia, or in this part of Australia, which is probably going to be next year, I'll, uh, I'll do a proper tour of the roundhouse and just focus on that itself. But uh, you know they've done a pretty 
tremendous job of managing the sand dunes here and, and making a lovely boardwalk all the way along the harbour. I'll walk down on the beach so we can have the nice sound of waves for a few minutes as part of this tour. sound of a truck a truck backing that's not terribly relaxing is it lovely bather there on the right.
So now uh, we're just walking behind the back of the Esplanade, which is the great green area that uh, I finished part one of this walking tour on and started part two of this walking tour on. And uh, this is just a memorial to the fishermen who have contributed so much to the wealth of this colony um, and town as it became and now city. And as you can see, it's a massive harbour. It just goes on and on. There's boats moored here from all over the world with all sorts of different seafaring purposes. I find harbours really fascinating and have always lived in cities that had things to do with harbours. Really, I guess that's what cities are built on, isn't it? Is trade and commerce and harbours are a really important part of that whole ecosystem. Right, so the boardwalk ends just up here at one of my favourite pubs called Little Creatures. It's actually a brewery where they have a pub section and restaurant, which is a great place to come and eat. And um, they've exported beers around the world, really. They've been a huge success. So, sounds like they're already open. They're probably open for breakfast. But anyway, I'll leave it here on this walking tour of Fremantle. It's Bronwyn Lund signing off from Bronholm Tours. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Bye for now.